All right, living environment regions, the 16th video. Enzymes, right? So enzymes are very important. Without them, we would not survive, right? So enzymes, the basic definition is they're catalysts, they're biological catalysts, and they help increase the rate of a chemical reaction. So let me write that down and explain a little more about that. If we break down the words and make sure we have our pen ready, eh, let's stick with red. So biological, obviously, because they're inside of us, biology, right? So we say enzymes. And enzymes are, they are proteins. They're proteins. There we go. They're proteins. And again, like I said, they help increase and control. Let's put in control. The rate. of a chemical reaction. And you can also say that they're catalysts, you know, because catalysts jumpstart a chemical reaction. They help it going, right? And so we know what reaction is. So, for example, you know, you remember an experiment when you were probably in middle school, right? We had this volcano over here. Who knows what that is? And, you know, when we mix vinegar, this is a famous experiment, I think every science teacher does this and baking soda i've done it so many times and so baking soda and vinegar are the reactants and they'll react violently with each other obviously because one's an acid vinegar is an acid baking soda is a base and they're neutralizing each other right and they'll yield see that's the yield sign what they will re yield will be products so in this case, they're going to yield carbon dioxide, and they're going to yield water, and they're going to yield sodium acetate. Of course, when you saw this in school, all you cared about was this volcano coming out, especially if you put some food dye in. So let's look at enzymes, how that works. And here's a vocabulary alert. Get the pen. Let's switch to blue. So the, here's the enzyme, right? And it's going to have an active site. This is where the substrate will attach to, right? And a specific enzyme only works with certain substrates. So what are these substrates? Well, these are the reactants. Remember I told you about reactants? So let's use an example in our body. We'll use cellular respiration. Let's cut this up, this substrate. We have glucose. You know, we need glucose for energy. And over here, we also need oxygen. They have to react with each other. So glucose and oxygen are the reactants, and they will yield, they will yield a product. In the case, this case will be energy. So let's just throw it over here. We'll say glucose, here's glucose, plus oxygen. Will we fit it? Put a small arrow. We'll yield CO2, we'll yield H2O water, and it will yield ATP. Fit it in. There we go. We fit. ATP, in, which is adenosine triphosphate. So it's adenosine triphosphate. In other words, it's energy. And so the enzyme is helping that. It's actually helping our body use less energy so this could be created. This is really important to understand. And I'm going to show you the chart on this. It's going to help us use less energy. Less energy. So let's get a better picture. All right, so here's cellular respiration. There's the substrates. They're specifically made. The enzyme is specifically made so they will fit like a jigsaw puzzle. So let's say that this one over here, and make sure our pen's ready. Use green. Why not? All right, and we'll say that this is glucose, and that's oxygen. And, of course, they're going to attach themselves at the active site to the enzyme, so now they're nice and snug. And once they attach themselves, it's right here that the product is being made. The product is created, the enzyme is helping it, it's jump-starting it, it's a catalyst. And of course, we remember the product was carbon dioxide, water, H2O, and ATP, energy, adenosine triphosphate. And once the product is made, it just leaves the enzyme, and the enzyme's ready to do it again. It's available. So that's really basically what's happening with the enzyme.
Now here's, here is the really important part. So as you can see, look at the blue line and look at the red line. So let me get that pen. The blue line is, so let's say the reactants again, will use glucose. We use glucose and oxygen. As you can see, when we use an enzyme, look how much energy is saved. Much less energy you need for that to work to gather your product. Without the enzyme, look at it, much more energy is needed. So your body needs much more energy without the enzyme. And when we're talking about glucose and oxygen with the enzyme, we're looking at seconds. All we need is seconds. Without the enzyme, we're looking about days. So you can see we just would not survive. That's why we need the enzyme. So enzymes are important, vitally important. So again, look at this chart again. Make sure you understand it. Again, with the blue line over here, with the enzyme, you're using less energy. So the enzyme is that catalyst that's helping us make these products with less energy. Just think of saving money. Right? You're using much less money, and you're getting the same output. Right, Because if you look at it here, let's clear this out. If you look at this line over here, right over here, they both will the overall energy released is the same. And yet we're using less energy to get these products with the enzyme. Very important to understand that. And by the way, uh, they're naturally produced inside of us, right? So our body makes enzymes. The digestive enzymes are made in the pancreas. And the pancreas, by the way, as you know, is in the digestive and the endocrine system. And overall, though, inside the pancreas, again, they are made in ribosomes. And we talked about this in other videos, how proteins are made. And again, remember, enzymes are proteins. And in other videos, we did talk about activation energy. It's that energy needed to jumpstart a reaction. And so this whole process where we use an enzyme, make sure we have our pen ready. Yeah, let's stick with blue. So we call this enzyme action. Enzyme action. Enzyme action. All right. Another thing to know about enzymes is that they are affected by temperature and the pH, which is the potential of hydrogen. So, for example, in your body, you know, we have an, on average about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So within that range, you know, that's fine. But if you get a fever, for example, that could definitely affect enzymes and they won't work properly. And pH needs to be considered too. So if you have a pH of 7, that's neutral. That's what water is. And so anything to the right of water, should like the right of where you're looking, right, those are bases or alkaline. Right, and then to the left where you're looking, those are the acids. So, for example, stomach acid, which is over here, right, the way over here, stomach acid in your stomach, um, that could affect certain enzymes like pepsin, for example, pepsin. So, pepsin in your stomach will not work properly if it's not enough acid, if there's too much alkaline, for example, in your stomach. Another thing to think about with um, that probably a lot of kids know about in high school is lactose intolerance. And not just high school, middle school, elementary school. You probably heard about this, right? So you can't drink milk. You can't drink dairy, right? And that's because you're missing a certain enzyme or the enzyme is just not working properly. So it's lactase, you know, that the enzyme lactase. So if you have that enzyme, then you could break down dairy products. If you don't, then you'll have a high, hard time digesting the dairy products because they can't break down the sugars. Also, you can think about animals. Let's clear this out. You know, like wild animals, like lions, for example. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my, right? A little pun there. Not a pun, but lions, they eat raw meat. We do not eat raw meat. Well, some of us try it, right? But we don't have the enzymes to break down raw meat. And what about vultures? Vultures not only eat raw meat, they eat rotten meat. They can deal with those toxins because they have enzymes to help deal with it. 
So again, we have so many different enzymes inside of us, and each enzyme inside of us wants the right conditions. They don't want to be too acid, or they don't want to be too basey, you know, with too much alkaline in them. All right, so those are enzymes. In the next video, we'll talk about hormones.